the late night schedules, prime time games this year, so, or so you will, have been mixed to say the least. You had three Sunday night football games, including the Thursday night opener on NBC, which were just awesome and close, highly contested games. And uh, between the Saints and the Packers, which came down to the last play, Dallas and the Jets, Philadelphia and the Falcons. And then ever since then, ever since Chris Collinsworth made the kiss of death statement of the year, wow, I can't believe we're getting all these amazing games every week. It's been dud after dud after dud, it seems. I know there's not a whole lot the NFL can do with this with the scheduling. They already have flex scheduling for weeks 11 through 17. But, you know, with this Colts tobacco this year, we've had them on a number of times on primetime games when clearly they don't belong. You had Jacksonville on primetime, and I know they won, but no one in their right mind believes they should have been out there on center stage. You know, is there anything the NFL can really do when it just happens to work out this way where teams they think were going to be good just aren't and you get these really big duds of a matchup? I think they need to make all the Monday night football games, if they're not division games, they need to make them, like, star player games. Like, if Peyton would have played the Sunday night game, no one would have complained, even if the Saints beat them, you know, 62-7. to It wouldn't have happened, most likely. But, you know, I think that they should make the division games because you got the Dallas Cowboys, the Eagles, playing on Sunday night this upcoming week. And yeah, they're both not two like fantastic teams right now, but they're a rivalry game and they always seem to deliver. The Chargers and the Chiefs normally have pretty good games. You know, San Fran and Arizona are normally pretty tight. I mean, the team, like that's what's compelling to me. I don't think a game, Jaguars versus the Ravens, which has like no ties to any sort of drama whatsoever, is, is interesting. I mean, it, not only is the game boring to watch with all the penalties and fumbles and, and stuff like that, but there's just, like, nothing. It's not relevant, you know what I mean? You bring up an interesting point about division games, and it's almost like Sunday Night Football heard you. Their next few games coming up, or for the rest of the season, I should say, Dallas at Philadelphia, division game. Baltimore-Pittsburgh, division game. New England at the Jets, division game. Then you go into flex scheduling, and you've got Philadelphia at the Giants, division game. Pittsburgh at Kansas City, not a division game, but looking increasingly like a game that's going to matter. The Colts at uh, Indiana at New England, which normally is the game of the year, which, thank God, will not be on prime time this year. That could be 100 to nothing. I'm looking for that game to be one of the worst games of the year. And, and the list goes on. So, yeah, the... It's as if the NFL got it right later in the year and maybe wanted to try some interconference or at a conference games earlier on just to see what might happen. And it's kind of blown up in their face this year, but I think towards the end of the year they've got it right. And with the flex scheduling, they should be in good position for some good games. That being said, the Monday night football schedule isn't as flexible. There is no flexibility. You would think with the billions of dollars they poured into the Monday night football properties, they would get flex scheduling. But... They don't. And you've got a game coming up week 14, which I'm going to argue might be the worst game in the history of Monday Night Football. St. Louis at Seattle. Yikes. <laughs> so, it, the it almost makes game, me sad. It almost makes me sad hearing that from you. I mean, that is that might be the worst game ever televised on a primetime slot. You are looking at two teams that I mean, the Rams The Rams are quietly making a case for the worst team in the league. They might go 0-16. And, and, you know, we all, all we do is talk about the Dolphins and the Colts, but St. Louis, assuming Bradford is uh, unhealthy most of the year, which his injury status is sort of up in the air every week, they're a horrible team. Seattle is just atrocious to watch. How they won the division last year is becoming more and more unclear. Monday Night Football is just sort of like I, they spend so much money and sometimes they get so little bang for their buck. Now, let's look at their schedule. So their upcoming schedule, you've got the Chargers at the Chiefs, the Bears at the Eagles, Minnesota at Green Bay, Kansas City at New England, the Jets at New Orleans. So it should it should continue to improve. But I do feel like there needs to be some way that they can get a better game, if need be, based on, A, how much money they spend, and, B, what fans want to see. And while I understand that Fox and CBS spend a boatload of money as well for their football properties, and that they can protect their 4 o'clock games. I still think when it's prime time, you want the best product out there. And St. Louis and Seattle, week 14, is not the best product. But, but let's put it this way. You know, the NFL normally beats the World Series on regular season games. 
that should tell you that the ESPN isn't really worried about, you know, who and what. They know that they're going to get a ton more fans than they would a, a Royals-Brewers game during the regular season. So it's money for them. The advertisements are still going to come in. Uh, there's no way that they're going to overtake CBS or, or Fox for, for these major games when it comes down to it because those are who they need to protect. Because broadcast dollars are more are more lucrative than cable dollars because not everybody has cable dollars. So if you look at even NFL Network, if you look at most of their schedule, they're nothing but throwaway games. I think like they have Seattle versus Philly is one of their games. Like who who wants to watch that? I mean, outside of me. <laughs> who well, wants to watch that? They game? do have Oakland. Actually, their opening game, though, should be a good one, Oakland and San Diego. But I agree with you. For years, the NFL Network, with the exception of a handful of games, uh, I believe Dallas and Green Bay a few years ago being one of them, and then, of course, the infamous Giants-Patriots undefeated game, which eventually got moved to uh, NBC. But, yeah, the NFL Network can use that because they just want to show football. And whether they get a good game or not, you know, they're thrilled if they do, but if they don't, it's not the end of the world because people are going to that channel to watch football. People might not necessarily be going to ESPN to watch football. They might be going to watch SportsCenter or whatever the heck, you know, the worldwide leader in uh, biased sports coverage uh, shows. So, you know, it's just, uh, it's all relevant. But I, I guess, you know, you make a good point. It's pretty difficult to really change the scheduling. And the flex scheduling was a big added addition in uh, 2006, so they've come a long way. So I guess you're just going to get stuck with some of these games this year, or maybe you just don't schedule AFC West ga- or NFC West games this late in the year. <laughs> uh, uh, so. Well, the thing is too with that. If you, I mean, if you want to go even further, it's one thing to reschedule something, you know, a couple hours later, but it's another to to reschedule it, you know, another day. There's people that right. buy tickets to these events that may have a wedding. I know it would be weird to have a wedding on Monday, or maybe they have, like, a conference on Monday, but they're available on Sunday. I mean, you're, you're going to mess with the fan, and the fan may not want to come back after that if you're going to consistently, you know, change their games in the at the end of the season. Oh, those Monday weddings, they'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're curious what you guys think. Comment below. Let us know what you think. Is there anything the NFL can really do to get this scheduling situation maybe fixed or altered a little bit? It's not the end of the world, but, boy, people have been on Twitter in full force saying the scheduling has been just awful this year, and rightfully so. My name is Scott Jacobs. This has been uh, Juiced Sports Radio. Mike, thanks for joining us as always. Follow us on Twitter at Juiced Sports Now. Check us out at JuicedSportsBlog.com. We are out. Good night, everybody.